In this video we will be discussing renal clearance which is an important concept which is widely used in research and in the clinics. Renal clearance refers to the elimination of waste and other non-essential products from the plasma into the urine. Of course other organs are also capable of clearing the plasma. The general definition of plasma clearance is that it is a measure of the overall ability of the body to eliminate a substance completely from the plasma per unit of time. Some of these organs will be the liver, the lung, salivary glands and of course the kidney. The role of the kidneys in, is of special importance because it refers specifically to the kidneys and it turns out that it is the major process by means of which the kidney will eliminate substances from the blood. In fact, it totals approximately 65% of the total clearance. It is perhaps prudent that we start our discussion of renal clearance by first reviewing the role of the kidney in this process. A major role of the kidney is to protect the internal environment and it does this by a number of processes. First of all, it regulates the extracellular fluid volume. The kidney regulates the iron concentrations of the internal milieu. It regulates the osmolality and the pH. Renal excretion plays a very important role in homeostasis. The kidney has to get rid of excess minerals such as sodium and potassium, metabolic waste such as urea and creatinine, and of course also toxins and drugs. In fact, the kidney has to get rid of anything that we take in excess. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney and it performs three basic functions starting with filtration at the glomerulus. It can also reabsorb substances, substances that are required by the body and it can secrete substances that escape filtration. Renal excretion is the sum of these three functions. The excretion of substances requires the integrated function of all nephrons in our kidneys. Humans have approximately 2 million nephrons, whereas dogs will have about 1 million nephrons and cats about half a million. Renal clearance has also been described as, as one of the more difficult concepts for students to comprehend in physiology. The reasons for this problem are not clear, but it has been suggested that the difficulty may in part reflect the quantitative nature of renal clearance or because students have to apply models from biophysics and bioengineering to events occurring in the kidney. To make our understanding of renal clearance more easy, we will approach the subject by concentrating on two principles. The principles are the general concept of plasma clearance, which is so important for pharmacokinetics, and secondly, the concept of mass balance as it applies to the kidney. When we look at the definition of renal clearance, we realize that renal clearance refers to the virtual volume of plasma that is completely cleared of a specific substance called X in a particular period of time, usually one minute, and then excreted in the urine. It is important to realize that clearance refers to a volume of blood, in other words a rate, and it is not referring to an amount.
the principle of plasma clearance in general is one of the two principles that underlies the mechanism of renal clearance. The principle is illustrated in this diagram. Blood that enters the organ in question contains a certain concentration of a substance. The rate of inflow is defined by the inflow concentration, also called the driving concentration, times the organ blood flow rate. Next, the organ will remove some of the substances for excretion by its processes. The rate of excretion is described by the concentration in the exiting fluid times the flow rate. The blood leaving the organ will have a lower concentration of the substance. In general, plasma clearance is defined as the ratio of two terms. The ratio is first of all the rate of elimination uh, from the plasma and secondly it is the plasma or the driving concentration in the incoming blood. The kinetics of this process has been described as the most important of all pharmacokinetic principles. The second principle that we use to explain renal clearance is that of the law of mass balance. This law is necessary to maintain a constant internal environment. The intake has to be equal to the excretion of a product. Total body content is simply the intake plus any production of a substance minus the excretion. And therefore, if anything should go wrong with the excretion, for, then the internal environment of that system will be disrupted. We see this, for example, in renal failure, which is diagnosed by an increase in the plasma urea concentration, the plasma creatinine concentration, or the plasma potassium concentration. We can, of course, apply mass balance relationships to the kidney, but this is a particular problem because there is one input to the kidney via the renal artery, but the kidney has two outlets, namely the renal vein as well as the ureter. Therefore, when we look at mass balance in the kidney, then the amount going into the kidney of any substance must equal the amount going out. Now we know from Fick's law that an amount is simply a concentration of a substance times its volume flow rate. Accordingly, the amount of any substance going into the kidney via the renal artery can be defined by the plasma concentration of that substance X in the artery, the small a, times the renal plasma flow of the artery. The amount out in the renal vein is the concentration of that substance in the vein times the renal plasma flow of the vein. And then we have the second outlet, namely the ureter into the urinary bladder, which is the concentration of the substance X in the urine times not plasma flow, but the volume flow of urine. Together, UX times V dot, and the, the dot indicates a rate, is also known as the excretory rate of the system. So now we can define mass balance in the kidney by this equation. The moment we look at this equation, we also immediately realize a problem. It's a relatively complex equation to work with. 
Some of the reasons why it is complex is in order to use this equation to measure mass balance, we need to know what is the renal plasma flow in the artery and in the vein. And also we need to know what is the concentration of the substance X in the vein. It is not impossible to get these values, but it is most cumbersome and many people especially physicians, will not use this pr process. It is possible to get a simpler definition of mass balance in the kidney. We can do that by modifying the original definition of mass balance in the kidney in two ways. Let us start with looking at our original definition. All that we do in renal clearance is to compare the input via renal artery to what is appearing in the urine. From this it's very clear to see that the concentration of X in the renal artery is proportional to the amount excreted in the urine. The more we have coming in, the more we could have appearing in the urine. Our first modification is to get rid of renal plasma flow. And to do that, we also get rid of the proportionality constant. We can replace renal plasma flow with the virtual volume from which all of X has been cleared. So in this way, we can ignore any output via the renal vein. The output, the excretionary rate, in the urine is the same as before, that is ux times v dot. So now we have a simpler equation where the, according to mass balance, the input rate equals the output rate. And that is the simplified mass balance equation or definition for renal clearance. P of x times the virtual volume of x equals the excretory rate. But at this point, I want to point out to an alternative definition for renal clearance, which perhaps is going to make more sense to you. Cx, the cleared volume, is also that volume of plasma that will originally provide the concentration of the substance X to be excreted in the urine. The two definitions are the same, but the second one is perhaps more easy to understand. So at this point we can take the definition, the simplified definition of renal clearance in the kidney and simply rearrange the, the equation that we have. By rearranging the equation we're going to get Cx equals the ratio of Ux times V dot over Px. The beauty of this equation is that you simply have to take a measure of the um, arterial blood. You can also take a sample of the urine and measure the concentration of X in there. So you need only three numbers from which to calculate Cx. And these are, first of all, the plasma concentration of X, the urine concentration of X, and the urine flow rate. Now typically you will collect your urine over a period of say 24 hours, measure the concentration of uh, the substance X in the urine and use that in your equation. Pay special atten attention to the units. The units, I tell you that clearance is not an amount, so the units will be a rate, namely milliliter per minute. I also wish to point out to you the similarity between the equation for renal clearance, which is found in all textbooks, and the definition of plasma clearance in general as used especially in pharmacokinetics. They are very similar. A 
The second problem that students often have is they do not understand what is meant by a virtual volume. So if you look at your equation to calculate renal clearance, Cx, the clear plasma volume, is a virtual volume. So the question is, what do we mean by a virtual volume? In the next rather complicated vo uh, diagram, we will try and explain the meaning of a virtual volume as is required by the definition of renal clearance. Looking at the upper diagram, we see that a volume V entering the nephron in this instance contains a substance X in a concentration of 8 units per milliliter, which may be milligrams per milliliter, but we just use the number 8 in this example. Some of the substance X is then removed from the blood by the processes of the nephron. One sees that after removing the substance into the urine, the blood leaving the nephron is composed of two volumes, a volume that has been totally cleared of X and excreted in the urine. By definition, this is our cleared volume, or Cx. In this example, the volume is 0.38 milliliter. Secondly, there is a volume, which is the volume, the original volume V, minus the cleared volume. This volume measures 0.62 milliliters. So together we also have the same volume coming into the kidney as is according to mass balance. In this hypothetical volume, the substance X is in its original concentration. You can find that by taking 5 units and divide it by the volume of 0.62 milliliters, you'll get about 8 units per milliliter. It is of course impossible for the kidney to take all of a solute out of a volume of plasma because its existence would violate the laws of diffusion. Therefore, blood leaving the kidney is homogeneous, and it is homogeneous because of free div diffusion between these two hypothetical volumes. In this fraction, the plasma is simply at a lower concentration, in this example, 5 units per milliliter. In other words, the kidney does not selectively remove and excrete all of the substance from only certain portions of the plasma, but it removes some of the substance from each milliliter of plasma that passes through it. Renal clearance is a reliable measurement of renal excretory function, and it is of great importance in clinical practice, research, and pharmacology. Clearance could simply be defined as the amount of a substance excreted in the urine per minute, but this would tell us nothing about the role of the kidney in the process. Notice that the urine that is used to calculate the excretory rate of a substance X is taken from a point when it is no longer modified by the body and therefore it will tell us clearance of that substance X can tell us everything about the function of the kidney itself. Listed here are a number of the functions of renal clearance. Of course it's used to assess renal function in the clinics and you can do that by measuring the rate of glomerular filtration you can measure the renal plasma flow rate. You can also measure something which is called the free water excretion. In the research, we can use clearance of certain markers to differentiate the mode of transport in the nephron. And especially in pharmacology, they can measure the half-life of drugs.
In this example, we will briefly look at the clearance of a marker called creatinine. And we use this to assess the rate of glomerular filtration and thereby of renal function. Glomerular filtration rate is considered the single most useful and sensitive test of renal function. Creatinine is close to an ideal endogenous substance for measuring glomerular filtration rate. Creatinine is nearly totally cleared from the plasma by filtration only, and it is not reabsorbed or significantly secreted. Only about 10% is secreted, and we can ignore that in the calculations. Accordingly, the clearance of creatinine is used as a measure of GFR. Let us do a simple calculation of some values from the clinics. In this example, the renal artery contains creatinine at a concentration of 0.01 mg per milliliter. The excretory rate is a concentration of 1.25 mg per milliliter and the urine flow rate was measured as being 60 milliliters per hour. If we now plug these values into the renal clearance equation, we get the following result. We find that gliatinine clearance which is approximately GFR, is going to be 1.25 milligram per minute, which is the excretory rate, divided by the plasma concentration, the so-called driving concentration, of 0.01 milligram per milliliter. Be very careful, always watch your units, and this gives us a GFR of approximately 125 milliliter per minute. This is very much in the range for a normal, healthy young man. With kidney failure, we will find that your creatin plasma creatinine levels will go up, that is mass balance, and your clearance value will go down. Repeated assessment of this a test over a period of time will indicate to you whether the renal function of the animal is stable or deteriorating. Just for an example, in cats and dogs, the um, plasma creatinine clearance levels will usually be between 2 to 5 milliliter per minute per kilogram. So the units here are slightly different, so just watch that.